Hi, I'm Kyle Stedman. I want to show you a few things you can do to set up a report using Microsoft Word. I'm using Word 2013. A lot of these tricks will work in other versions of Word. They just might look a little bit different, just an itty bitty bit of a warning. So let's say I want to start with a title page. I'm going to center my text. Um, doesn't not everyone has to do this the same way, but maybe I like uh, put my title here. Uh, maybe I say something descriptive, like it's an annual report, 2013. You know, I'm I'm actually following the guidelines in um, the Business Writer's Companion Seventh Edition. By the way, I might like do something like prepared by my name. Um, uh, you know, like um, you know, you can you can figure out what you want um, on your title page later so say say that's there okay awesome one thing i like to do in word is uh, when i am done with a page i often go to the next page by hitting control enter watch what happens bam all of a sudden i'm on the next page and what i like is that if i have something down here no matter what i do on this top page no matter how many times i hit enter no matter how many times i go down you see it didn't move that stuff control enter makes a, a page break that doesn't mess with that okay so let's pretend this is my title page and I'm, I'm happy with that Let's say after that, I want a table of contents page. Um, so um, right now, I'm going to assume that like my my main headings are like all caps bold in my normal font. Of course, you could change your font to do whatever you want. Uh, I actually want to come back to the title, the contents page. I want to mess with that later. So I'm just going to kind of make it a placeholder right now. Um, I'm going to put my cursor back on the left because it makes you feel more comfortable. I use Control L for that. You could also do it up here. Okay, I've got my contents page. Um, I want to get some page numbers on here. So I'm going to go and do insert uh, page number, which number. This is one of many ways you can do it. Um, I'm going to get it on the bottom of the page in the center. And right away I'm seeing, oh, this is kind of my intro stuff. This is like my table of contents. I want like a Roman numeral page number here. So I'm going to make sure my cursor is in that footer and then um, choose page number format numbers. Um, say I'm not in there, say I'm somewhere else. Well, I can double click in and out of this footer space just by double clicking. So if I double click here, I can now mess with these words. Um, but if I single click, I can't click my page number. But if I double click into it, I can do stuff to my page numbers. You follow me? Double click in and out. So if I'm down here, I'm in my footer, I, I'm in page number area, I should be able to find a page number format option, something like that. And what I'm going to do is click format and change my format to Roman numeral. Okay? I know I'm going super fast, but you know, you can watch this again. Let's see what happens. Okay, now my title page has a page number with a little one on it. My contents page has a page number with a little two. That's okay, but you know what? I really don't want that page number on my title page. Yes, I want it to kind of be an invisible Roman numeral one, but I don't want people to see it. It's not a common thing to be on a page number. So what I'm going to do is make sure Word knows I want my first page to be different. Well, Word is smart enough to know I might want that. So again, if I'm clicked down there, if I'm in my, my page number area, I should see an option like this different first page. You see in Word that um, depending on where I click, I might get a new kind of menu tab. This design tab wasn't over here before. I mean, there's kind of that design tab, but this one with these options is only showing up because I double clicked in there. Like watch, I'm going to double click over here. Poof, it disappeared. Oh no, how do I do that? I just double click into it and then my options are there again. I'm going to choose different first page, see what happens. Okay, magically my first page doesn't have it. My second page does now. If I if I continued, if I double click back into my normal space, I hit Control Enter to get to my next page. Blah blah blah. Um, hey, look, my my page numbering will continue. It'll do that magically as far as I want. Again, with my page number at the top different. Here's my problem. After my table of contents, I really want to get into like the main content of my my report. Like I really want this to be like introduction here. And I really don't want my mage, main page numbering to have those Roman numerals. It's, it's pretty common, right, for intro, kind of front matter stuff, to have Roman numerals, but the rest not to. So how in the world do I do that? Well, um, you remember how I hit Control Enter to go to make that um, page break? I need something a little stronger. I need something that says not just a page break, but a whole section break with whole new settings there. So I'm going to delete all that. You see, I'm back on my table of contents. I'm going to hit Enter a couple times to give me some space. And I'm going to go to my page layout um, menu up here, and you see that I have breaks here. If I click breaks, you see I have different kinds of breaks. What I've been doing is inserting a page break. It's just a simple little page break, um, 
but what I really want here is a section break. Now, a section break is different because I can have completely new settings and completely new page numbers after that. So I'm going to click this next page section break, making sure I pick the one under there. Let's see what happens. Well, at first it looks the same thing. I'm, I'm on my next page. Okay, what happened? There's a lot of invisible stuff going on. Let me scroll down and look at the page number. Whoa, it's not there. So Word is saying, hey, you're in a whole new section. What do you want to do here? Well, let me do the same thing as before. Let me do my insert uh, page numbers. Again, there's other ways to get to it. Plain number down here. You might say, oh, well, this is the same thing. It gave me a Roman numeral there, and I have a Roman numeral. Crap, it didn't work. No, it did. On my new section, on my new page, in my new section, I'm going to make sure I'm clicked down there in the bottom. I'm going to, again, click page number and format page number, same thing I did before. And this time I'm going to change it, make my format go back to number one. I'm going to tell it to start at number one. You may say, okay, well, that's great, number one. But look, back here, I still have my Roman numerals. So in other words, Word is saying, no matter what you do up in this section, we're going to keep giving you Roman numerals. Like I could keep on typing and do my control enter trick to go to the next pages. And it's going to keep doing Roman numerals as long as I'm in that top half. Down here on this next page, I'm in this new invisible section. And no matter how much I type, no matter how much I hit control enter to go to new pages, it's always going to do my Arabic numerals. It's all about the section break. That's the most important thing. Okay, let me delete a little bit of this jibber jabber that I did and um, clean this up a little so you're not like, what is he even doing? Uh, and get back to a place where I have a table of contents, which remember, we'll fill in later. Okay, let me be honest. Sometimes when you're in your new section and you've got your new Arabic number there, sometimes it does wonky things like making your <laughs> page number show up again on your first page. It doesn't always seem to happen. I'm not totally sure the logic of it. Here's what I do when that happens. Um, it has to do with the same as previous. There's, there's um, instructions that are being sent from the beginning to here. So what I want to do is um, disconnect this. If, if I click down here in the menu that shows up, I see this link to previous button. I'm going to unlink that. Now, I go up here, and this still is there on the first page, but if I delete it now, as long as I have different first page chosen up here, I should hopefully be able to delete that without deleting both. Great. I have nothing on the front. I have a Roman numeral 2 there. I have an Arabic number here. Okay. Moving on. That's enough on page numbers. Let's assume that I want to get into my actual report. And let's say that I like, have some stuff I want to say here. Here's my topic. Um, and let's say I have um, my kind of main headings, which sometimes I'll call an H1, and my subheadings, right? Like a subheading in the introduction uh, section. Um, what I wish I could do, and which I can do, is I wish I didn't have to every time hit uh, all caps bold. And I wish I didn't have to every time I was in an H2 hit bold. I, I wish I could like, magically change this. This effect especially matters when I'm choosing different fonts, right? Like, what if my heading fonts are, are like a sans serif font, which is something pretty common to do. I don't every time want to have to manually choose that. Here's what I think is the easiest way, is I, I highlight something I want to be my H1, my heading 1 on every single page. And then I go to my home page, and you see how there's these predetermined headings. Well, I make it look the way I want down here, choosing the right font, the right, the right, um, you know, spacing decisions, all of that. Then I right-click heading one, and I say update heading one to match selection. So now, every time I click, well, that was weird. Every time I click heading one later on, it's going to magically make it look like that. I can do the same thing here. I can highlight my heading two, my subheading, go right-click heading two, update heading two to match selection. So now. Watch this. If I'm I'm typing along, typing, 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 I'm like, oh wait, I need a heading one here. I'm just gonna click heading one, start. Oh, it didn't make it all caps. Okay, but it did make it bold. <laughs> start typing here, and watch when I hit enter, the bold disappears. It knows it knows um, I'm back to my normal font. Sometimes if the normal font isn't correct, I do the same thing. I highlight this. I'm like, hey, this is what I want normal to look like. Update normal to match this. Okay, now I want an H2. I click H2, and it should automatically do a subheading again here. Um, more in H2. 
what I do is as I go through the entire report, I continue to always mark my headings by pushing those buttons. Now you might say, that's no big deal. I can just do it manually. What's the point? Why even bother calling it an H1 and an H2 up there? Aha, I'm really glad you asked. Um, because it has to do with my table of contents. I'm gonna go back here to my, my table of contents page. And if I go to my references page, there should be some kind of a table of contents. Now I'm gonna click table of contents and I'm gonna say, just give me an automatic one. Who knows, let's see what happens. Now interestingly, it's giving me exactly what I typed on the next page. You see, these are, this isn't like Word coming up with these titles. These are the titles that I made. Um, it looks like they gave it a little title of content, so I don't really need this one anymore, right? Um, is that is that actually going to continue? Well, let me let me try. Let me do my control enter trick. Let me get down to page <clears throat> page two. Hey, what happened to the page number? Why is it not centered anymore? Oh, we'll figure that out later. Um, get down here. And say heading one. Um, now maybe I'm in um, a section on uh, visual analysis. I'm gonna hit enter. Now here's my normal text about visual analysis and then maybe then I have an h2 of like um, analysis of visual one blah 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 then I have another h2 analysis of visual two blah 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 uh, let me let's go back to the table of contents what happened well hey it's it's not there well wait if I click this and I click update table update the entire table Oh my goodness, the stuff that I added, including the correct page numbers, including my headings, all shows up here. Here's my point. If you're smart and you use H1 and H2 throughout your essay, it will magically make a table of contents for you. I didn't have to worry about the spacing. I didn't have to worry about, is it on the right page? Word will do that for you at the end, as long as I leave a space for it later. It's so smart. Let me show you something else cool. Um, say I start to think this H1 is kind of ugly. You know, I maybe, um, like I said, if Times New Roman is my main font, maybe I want like Baron Noya for my, I don't know, that's a little fancy. Maybe I want Nexa Bold for my H1. Remember, I can always change it, right click, update heading one to match selection. Maybe I want my H2 to be uh, the same font, right? Probably don't want it too different. Maybe I want that to be like a little smaller or something. Um, I can play with it, make it look the way I want, right click, update heading two. Watch what happens. Throughout the essay now, it's always changing everything. As long as I labeled it heading one and heading two, it always knows. Um, I mean, I don't think it changes the font up here, but let's see, update table. No, but you see what I mean? It's, it's there, it's making things look good. So, uh, couple more things I want to I want to show you really quickly I want to get into what if I have a picture what if I have a figure in my report it's really common right um, one common picture you might have as a screenshot for the assignments that I'm giving these days so say uh, I want this screenshot here well there's a lot of ways to take a screenshot if you're in Windows I think the easiest way is a little tool called the snipping tool you can find it if you um, just hit start button and you search snipping it should be there it should be built in you know it kind of looks like this I can click new and select what do I actually want to snip as a screenshot well maybe I just want this part here well I can I can grab it and actually, it'll let me save it. It'll let me annotate it if I want, um, but I don't really have to. I can just uh, copy what I've got here now along with my little scribble. I can go back to Word, and I can just paste my little image straight in. It's the easiest way, right? All I did was take the screenshot with the snipping tool, copy it to the clipboard, you know, which is kind of invisible, paste it in here the same way I would paste anything. And yet, it's not labeled right now. It's just kind of in here. So couple of suggestions. One, if I click it, remember I get a new menu for what I clicked. So I'm going to go to my picture tools that is now magically there when I click it. Um, play around with your position. Um, you can see I can automatically do like a, well, you want it here, do you want it there, do you want it there. Um, often figuring out where you want it first is kind of the best way to do things, um, but you, you really have a lot of options. You can play around, play around. I'm not going to keep doing that. But if I want to add a label, something you should always do in a formal report is have um, some kind of a label. So I'm going to right click it, and I should have this insert caption option. Great. Insert caption. Um, let's call it figure one. It's a really good idea for a figure. Uh, screenshot 
from wherever, you know, I would be more specific. Um, if this is from something that was on my work cited, I might even put like a reference, you know, like this is this is from um, Smith 2015 to, to let people know where, where it came from. I'm going to hit OK, see what happens. Sweet. My figure one caption is now there. The problem is if I kind of move this around, well, that figure doesn't always show up with it. There are a few ways to fix that. Often what I do is I just add the figure language at the very end. Sometimes I go back and I kind of do a little fiddling with it. Um, now in my text, I can be like, as you see in figure one, blah, blah, blah. Uh, super, super easy, as long as you realize that there might be some fiddling. You might have to, as your final, final, final thing, after you finish all the text, you have to make sure, okay, is this picture still where I want it? No, I want it over there a little. Is this figure text still where I want it? No, I want it, I want it over, over there a little bit. Great. Um, that's really it. Um, well, I, we see this weird page number thing mess. Are you starting to see why page numbers can be, can be annoying? So let me double click into there. Um, you really can do whatever you want with these. So I'm going to... Uh, highlight it and center and see what happens. Does that center it below too? No, because it's a new section. Let me center this one too. Okay, that worked. For me, page numbers are the most annoying thing, but as long as you know some of the basic ideas, that sometimes they're linked to previous, sometimes you can have a section break, um, it's not really that hard. This looks like a mess right now, but you can imagine how I could clean it up pretty well, right? Uh, let me do one last thing while I'm kind of thinking of, of headers. Maybe I want some, some nice header here, like uh, visual analysis report. Um, because I have multiple sections here, if I add something to the header, it's only going to show up wherever I've, uh, in the section where I put it. Um, so say, say that's my header. OK, it's on page two. It's on page one. Uh, oh, funny, it's not on page one. Oh, it's not on page one because I have a different first page. Let me unclick that. It's on page one, two. It shouldn't show up up here. Um, if it does, I'm going to have to do some more of that unlinking stuff. It looks like I have the link to previous. I'll unlink it. Hopefully, that means it's not showing up here. Or at least it means if I delete it, it won't delete it down here. Do you see how heading footer stuff is kind of annoying? And yet, you can figure out if you fiddle, if you play around. OK, sound good? I'm talking too much. I'm done. See you later.